Hello and welcome to another Unity 5 2D development tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be going over tile map collision. My name is Jeremy and let's get right to it. So from the last video we learned how to make a simple tile map to use for our game with the snap settings. As you can see I've expanded on it and made an actual game level with the spreadsheet we were using. Using the technique from the last video I was able to make this level but you'll notice I kind of painted over the player so let's fix that. Every sprite is given a sorting layer in their renderer. Automatically each sprite is added to the default sorting layer. And it's also given the number zero order in that layer. The newest tile will cover the older tiles that you put in the scene. In this case our player was covered as you can see he's still in our hierarchy. But by giving him an order that's in the frontmost of the default layer he'll be brought to the frontmost of the map. If we were to give him an order number of zero, and in this case, or if we go even further back, negative one, he'll be in the backmost of the layer. So for now, we're just going to give him an order layer of one, so he's in the frontmost of our scene. The tile map was also, all of those sprites are also in the default sorting layer. Now that our player is visible again, let's make it so we can't accidentally edit our tile map. You can see when we select, we're grabbing every single tile, and that can get really frustrating because if you're developing and you accidentally delete or edit one of these tiles or move it, that can just really get in the way and get annoying. So to fix this, let's go to the top right of Unity under the layers. We're going to edit layer, and we're going to make a new user layer, and we're going to call this background. If you hit enter and go back to the tile map, in the inspector you can see that we have a layer to assign it to. You're going to hit background and we're going to change all the children objects, so it's going to change every single tile. All we've done is we've assigned the tile map a layer of background. If we go back to the layer panel, you'll see here that our background layer now pops up and we have two actions. We can either show it, or I'm sorry, hide it, show it, or we could lock it and unlock it. In this case, we're going to lock it. Now when we go to select, we're only going to select the other two things in our hierarchy, which is our main camera and our player, and we won't have any issues with our tile map. Even though our tile map is locked, we can still add components to it. So if we go to add component, physics 2D, we're going to add an edge collider, and we're going to add a box collider. If we go to our edge collider, you can hit edit collider, and we can start dragging it to create a collider for our floor, I'm sorry, for our walls and our ceiling. The box collider is going to handle our floor. So just like this, I'm going to get it as close to that spread as I want it to be. And now we have our tile map collision set up. It's that simple. But to actually get this to work, because if I hit play, nothing's going to happen, to actually activate our colliders that we just set up, if we go to our player, we add our component, we're going to go to physics 2D, and we're going to give them gravity by adding a rigid body. If we add a box collider and we drag him up we'll snap him up there and we hit play he'll actually fall onto our floor collider now if we added a movement script and he started to move or jump he would bump into the edge colliders and not leave the level if you like this tutorial please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel for more cool things like this but that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one